We now come to the differential backup method and its differences in comparison to incremental backups. Scenario 6 is where we do a differential backup of stage 1. And it has the same surrounding conditions as scenario 1 using the incremental procedure. What's important to understand here is that there's no difference yet between using each of the methods. Upon starting the process, the differential backup will only handle those files that have been changed since the full backup was made. They are marked in red. So the resulting differential archive file has the same content and is of the same size as the corresponding incremental archive file. Now, when we do the second differential backup, where the partition is at stage 2, the difference between the two methods will become apparent. The second differential backup is also based on the last full backup, as was the first. But it doesn't take into account the in-between data states as does an incremental backup. The differential backup is based therefore only on the current data state and the original full backup. In other words, the second differential archive file contains the changes made to the data in the two incremental backups. The size of this file is therefore larger than an incremental backup file at this stage. In fact, the second differential archive file is the same size as the combined size of the two corresponding incremental backups. The main point here is that if we want to backup and then restore state 2, the first differential backup is no longer required. So we can delete this file. In this way, we could use a differential backup to consolidate a series of incremental backups. All of this will become even clearer when we look at the basic conditions that apply to restoring a partition. In comparison to an incremental backup, the differential method places the same value on any archive files that have been generated since the full backup. This is based on the fact that it always uses the last full backup as its basis. So the difference between the two backup methods only comes into effect after the second backup session. The following scenario illustrates this a little better. In the restoration of state 2, Using a differential backup, a Kronos image starts by choosing the last archive file to be restored. However, we don't need, as in the incremental method, all of the backups made in between. Additionally, to the last backup we only need the full backup. The resulting restored partition is of course exactly the same using either the incremental or differential method. Let's take a summarized look at the fundamental features and differences of each method. Incremental backups are based not only on the last full backup, but also on all incremental archive files created up to that moment. The advantage of this method is the speed of the process, which results from only the smallest possible amount of data being saved. The drawback of this method is that each of the incremental backups in a series has to be stored. This fact can also be an advantage since you can restore all states that were saved, not only the most current state, as it's the case with the differential backups. However, if there are errors anywhere in the backup series, all of the following backups will also be affected by these errors. These properties make the incremental method especially well suited for disk imaging. In this way, one can easily find the cause of instability in a system. Because you can reconstruct the system step by step until you can see at which point the instability occurs and determine the likely causes. On the other hand, a differential backup only uses the full backup as its basis. Because you only work with two archive files using this method, it is a good way to consolidate a series of incremental backups. However, after the second differential backup, you will lose some performance because the size of the file is larger. You also lose the possibility to restore any of the states in between the original backup and the last save time point. 
unless of course you keep all of your differential backups made in between. But that wouldn't make any sense. In this case, we would be far better off sticking with incremental backups, since the size of the produced archive files is smaller. In practice, the differential method is recommended for file backup. This is due to the fact that you are usually only interested in the latest versions of a document. And in addition to the latest version, you also have the version of the document that was saved in the full backup. That concludes our look at the theory behind incremental and differential backups and also brings us to the end of this video. It's recommended to follow this video up with the second half, which will show you how to put into practice what we've learned here.